Good morning, it's Miss Ayers, and I want to give a special hello to Cassius and Nikaila and Charlie. Thanks for listening. Today we're going to read Cinder's A Chicken Cinderella. This kind of reminds me of Penguin Cinderella that we read a few weeks ago in class. This book is by Jan Brett. Snow on the outside, feathered friends on the inside. Every evening, Tasha took oats to little cinders and the other chickens in the old tower. This evening, a blizzard was raging and Tasha had to struggle through the wind and snow to get there. Inside, the old biddy Largessa and her daughters, Pecky and Bossy, pushed cinders out of the way and ate up the oats before cinders had any. She hid under the wood stove until Tasha lifted her gently onto her lap and fed her. So there's cinders, the chicken. After all the chickens were cared for, Tasha tried to leave, but the snow had piled up against the door. Her father was traveling and wouldn't be home until the next day, so she curled up near the warm stove. There she is sleeping. I don't know if you can see her. As soon as Tasha fell asleep, a warm glow filled the room, and the hen house came to life. The chickens clucked and gossiped until Largessa, that big know-it-all, pranced out of the shadows with an invitation to the ball. Darling, she trilled, it will be more than a ball. P prince Cockerel is sure to be looking for a princess bride. She winked and poked Pecky and Bossy. Time to get ready, she cackled with delight. Says Prince Cockerel, request the pleasure of your company. A fiat, a frolic, a feathered fantasy on a full moon at the Ice Palace. Cinders, lace my lacings and shine my slippers, Pecky ordered. Bring warm water to scrub my toes, Bossy bellowed. Do me first, Largessa ordered. Trim my tail feathers and fetch my jewelry box. Cinders didn't know where to start. The primping and fluffing, shining and smoothing seemed to go on for hours. Would she ever have time to get ready herself? What would she wear? She began to wonder if she could even go. So there's Cinders. The snow stopped and the moon shone a path through the window. The chickens dressed in all their finery flew off to the ice palace, all except cinders. She looked down at her wet feathers and frayed wingtips and started to cry. Suddenly, a log in the stove flared and to the light flew a beautiful silky hen cinders had never seen before. I'm here to get you ready for the ball, the silky promised, and she brushed cinders with her wand. Cinders found herself wearing a splendid silver saffron dress. Where ashes had covered her feathers, a silver sheen sparkled. On her feet were the loveliest crystal slippers, and in the basket nearby, one of her white eggs glowed like the silvery sheen of her dress. Next, the silky rolled out a pumpkin. She called to the pigeons on the rafters and pulled out some mice from under the floorboards. Lastly, she summoned three ducks. Then she brushed them all with their wand. The pumpkin became a fine sleigh. The pigeon's elegant footman and the mice in matching livery drove the truckula of ducks all in gilt harnesses. As they glided away through the wintry glade towards the ice palace, the silky called out to cinders, my magic will only work until midnight. The ice, when the ice clock times 12, everything will be as it was before. At the palace, the ball was beginning. Largessa pushed her daughters to the front of the line and gave Pecky a shove. The prince, ever the gentleman, caught her before she fell. She lucked up into his eyes, swooning the way Largessa had taught her. Once all of the guests were announced, Pecky and Bossy stayed close to the prince, keeping him away from the pretty young pullets. The door opened once more. Everyone looked to see who the last guest could be. Cinders stepped daintily into the ballroom, her eyes sparkling, her head held high. No one recognized the little hen. Prince Cockerel went forward to meet his beautiful mystery guest. He could not take his eyes off of her. The silky peeked through the windows. Prince Cockerel was leading Cinders onto the dance floor. This book is special because it folds out, but it's kind of hard to hold. So here it is, and it says, the prince never left her for a moment. When he crowed, she cooed. He was the most handsome prince, and she was a dazzling princess. The pullets, the hens, the cockerels, the roosters all wondered who, what graceful hen could she be who swirled around to the music. I 
the hour grew late. Dark clouds moved in and covered the moon. The ice clock began to chime. One, two, three, four. Cinders turned away and flew out the door. Five, six, seven, eight. She fluttered against the gate, losing her crystal slipper. Nine, ten, eleven, twelve. The little gray hen felt herself growing lighter as her silver dress turned into her old frock. She was covered in ashes just like before, and the spell was broken. She flew home and settled on her nest under the stove as the flock returned. The little girl is still sleeping right there. The next morning, the chickens twittered and clucked, wondering who the beautiful mystery guest was and why she had flown away. Suddenly, they heard a sound of bugles and lights coming as the stove lit up the tower. In came the prince carrying a crystal slipper and Cinder's eggs nestled in the basket. I will travel to the ends of the earth until I find the one who wears the slipper and lays silvery eggs. She is my true love, crowed Prince Cockerel, the princess of my heart. All the hens lined up to try the slipper. Big feet, long-toed feet, duck feet, they all tried, but not one foot fit into the dainty crystal slipper. When Peggy jammed her foot in, her toes buckled under, and she went off in a huff. Bossy's feathered foot was too large. It was so large that she tried hiding it by pulling the slipper along with her big toenail. The prince looked in each of the nesting boxes, and he saw brown eggs, tinted eggs, speckled eggs, but not one white silvery egg. And he was turning to leave. A luminous glow in the pile of straw under the stove caught his eye. And then he saw cinders and beckoned her out of her nest. She looked up at the prince and he stared into the eyes of his lady love. He knelt down and slipped the crystal slipper onto her foot. The prince had found his princess at last. Outside bells rang as a sleigh arrived at the tower. Tasha's father flung open the door, awakening his sleeping daughter. I thought I'd find you here among your feathered friends, Tasha, he said, revealing a handsome cockerel with a sweep of his arm. He will be an elegant addition to our flock, he exclaimed. He can live in the top floor with everything he needs and maybe some company as well. Perhaps a pretty hen that you've been taking special care of. And there's cinders right there in that picture. And from that day forward, the elegant Prince Cockerel and Princess Cinderella ruled the roost. And Tasha, especially on moonlit nights, tucked in her own bed, was sure she heard the sound of music and dancing coming from the tower. Do you think that was a dream? Maybe. Have a good day.